Christian the book, Earl. But here's another book, York. The history of the United States. And that live by the shore will be a perishing by the shore. Should Christians own firearms? Watch this. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. This is Nicholas Renner with the Renner Report. Coming to you on a Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Going to be talking about Christians own guns. Came out with a YouTube short not long ago. Talking about that very topic. We had some mixed feedback. Some people agree, some people disagree. I just want to go over my opinion. You probably already know my opinion right there. Whether Christians should own firearms or not. Let's get into the video. So ladies and gentlemen, do I think Christians should own firearms? Well, let's get into scripture about it, and then we'll get into a few different topics. we got a full long-form video of the Mini Mauser coming out on Friday. So the Car 98K, the Car 98K's little brother, Mini Mauser, believe it or not, they have had made replicas of that firearm that are not of the actual Mauser that weren't created by Mauser because they were Mauser 22 trainers, but they actually created some replicas, ladies and gentlemen. I got myself one of them, making a long-form video of that on Friday, posting that on Friday around 6 p.m. Eastern Time. But to get back into the video here, should Christians own firearms? Well, we'll go into, we'll go into Luke. Luke 22, 36, 38 says that if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one disciples take him literally and say here are two swords and jesus tells them that's enough so that is jesus speaking saying sell your cloak if you have a cloak sell your cloak and buy one there's other verses in the bible that go over this so there's there's a lot of distinctions that go on here that we got we're going to go over whether christians should own farms i think most people know this answer but i just wanted to make a video going over this topic because I really haven't seen any videos talking about this. We're commanded to turn the other cheek. We're commanded not to use violence. Okay, we're commanded to do everything in our power to turn the other cheek to be good. But why does why does Jesus say buy a sword? Because he, he, he's starting, he's, he's telling them things, things are going to get rough. Okay, so there's other verses in the Bible telling you if a strong man keeps his household, it's not going to get robbed. So in the Old Testament, there's David praising God who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. Psalms 144, 1, context of warfare. So you have Sergeant York. Have you ever, have you ever watched Sergeant York back in the day? It's a movie about a conscientious objector. Okay, another movie that came out, Hacksaw Ridge. Okay, he didn't use a firearm, but because he, he was traumatized. Okay, he was traumatized from his childhood. But we have we have Sergeant York owning a firearm. Okay, he had he had the distinction. He didn't want to go to war because we were, we were commanded to turn the other cheek. But then again, there's so many circumstances in the Old Testament where if there's no other option, you can't let the enemy trample over you because this is the devil's world. And if you live in America, the Constitution was designed around Christian principles, Judeo-Christian principles, or really Christian Christian principles. And the fact that we live in a fallen world and God works through our weapons like King David. Sometimes you're not going to have the biggest, baddest weapons. You're not going to have all you can have. God works through that. David didn't come with sword and, sword and spear. He came with the Lord God. He used what he had. So, so sometimes it's not about getting, getting the best firearm, getting the best weapon. You know, Sometimes it's all about what you have. All he had was a sling and a stone, and God was able to use that to kill the biggest, baddest that there is, you know. So, a giant, a giant of those times, this towering man. The Bible really never explicitly says, don't own weapons, don't own firearms, so we got to rely on God, but God has to work through things at times. You know, sometimes God is going to keep us away from a situation that's going to not not have it so we have to use that but sometimes the world the world has fallen and the founding fathers gave us those made the constitution based off of the bible biblical principles to give us that safeguard that we do live in a fallen world and there is people out there that are evil there's evil people we're all wicked we're all sinners and we all need to be prepared we all need to have the right to own a farm we all need to have that responsibility especially against tyranny 
as well as the average citizen. So the average citizen can be can turn into a criminal. The average citizen, there's criminals out there, there's evil people, there's wicked men, but there's no one good but God. But then you have organized crime, organized crime and, you know, car, cartels, syndicates. But then you have the organized crime of the government and what they perpetrate. You know, you look, you look, look back at the Roman times, how they, the things that they did, the things that they persecuted people. So, so, so you look at that, you think, oh, things have changed. No, nothing has changed. Governments are just exactly like that. You look 50 to 100 years ago. Nazi Germany, you see Stalinist Russia, you see all of these things going on around the country. People just think because we live in the United States that it's all of a sudden different. No, you should really think about why did the founding fathers give us the Second Amendment to begin with. But we'll get into more Bible verses here. So the Bible also talks about obeying laws, so we need to obey the laws, but it gets to a certain point where, you know, if the laws are saying, you know, round up, round up all the, you know, all this type of stuff, you know, you're not to then God, God is not going to want you to follow certain, certain things. Okay. The laws start going against God's law. That's, that's when we're to, um, take a second look at that. So we're on GodChristians.org. So they, they have their own topic about it. They say, ultimately there is nothing sinful about owning a gun or other weapon. A weapon can be useful and necessary in some contexts at, at the time Christians should be carefully consider their motive and purpose in owning a weapon. So it's really about the motive and the purpose why you were wanting to own a firearm. So we have the Bible saying, those who live by the sword die by the sword. So you have you have people out here that live that live by it. They're, they can't wait. Living by the sword, meaning you're you're you you want to go and die, you want to go and kill. Pretty much you want your whole purpose is to kill and use that instrument to kill others. You know, there's nothing wrong with sports shooting, there's nothing wrong with training to be, you know, part of the well regulated militia. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not against the Bible at all. But um, it gets to the point where, you know, some people try to say, oh, the Bible says those who live by the sword die by the sword. You sure you shouldn't own a weapon? No. That's talking about people that live by it. So so this should be always the last resort. If you ever watch The Rifleman, you know, Chuck Connors, you know, a man like that, a man that is always reluctant to use his firearm, it should always be the last resort. You should always try to do everything you can not to use it, but when it comes to your life going to be taken, you know, that is when you use self-defense to defend your life, when your life is threatened, when you fear for your life, when there's another lethal weapon about to be used or you're being overpowered, about to be, you know, knocked unconscious by groups of people, things like that, where you can be killed, you can be, you know, stabbed, those things. So in Luke 11, 21, the Bible says, when a strong man fully armed guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But it is, it is our duty, it is our duty to be ready. It is our duty to uphold our convictions. There's going to be a time and a date where we're going to be persecuted in these first world countries. They're going to come for us. And the Bible is clear on, you know, Jesus has already told us what to do. Okay, the last resort, do not live by the sword. So I just want to cut off this video here and say, ladies and gentlemen, my belief is yes, you should own firearms. You should own as many firearms as you want, you know. But the Bible says, you just said after they own two, you know, that's enough. So really, you know, if it's your hobby, that's your hobby. You can own a lot of firearms, but you should really, if you're not into it, you know, own, own a couple, own a couple. Like Jesus said, own, own a couple sores, that's enough. Sell your cloak, buy one. If you don't have one, train yourself, train yourself to be proficient in that self-defense. You know, David knew how to use that sling. Okay, David. David was proficient with the sling. Okay, I'm sure all the apostles knew how to use a sword. I'm sure all the men in the Old Testament that we look up to knew how to use a sword. You know, people say, "Why didn't Jesus have one?" Well, Jesus, Jesus had a set destiny to fulfill, and that wasn't with violence. If we could all live the same way Jesus lives, you know, try to do that. Don't don't use violence. But we're not. We're we're all also not. We're not God manifest in the flesh. Okay, you know. If Jesus really wanted to, he could have had the angels come down and slaughter slaughter everybody, okay? And that, that that's well known. One angel, one angel in the Old Testament, or one angel can take out take out thousand, thousands of men. So don't live by it. Don't 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 be that guy waiting, waiting, just just wanting to go out there and just seek see people, see people to do him wrong. 
be that last resort, but be ready. Have it as that last resort, okay? Because God knows your heart. God, in the end, knows your heart. He knows if you're looking, looking for war, looking, looking for reasons to use it, or if that's your, if that's a means of protection that God can work through and protect your life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a run report. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to support this channel and get this channel out on the map and get people to realize the truth, the truth about the gospel. And also, what's, what is going on? Conservative topics, firearm topics. Tell me what you guys want to see. See you next time.